I have so much to say today. <laughs> this is the book from which I'll be. No, I'm stuck. This is the book that I carried around all week, though, and I'll leave that here for people to look at. But, uh, it was an amazing week, and I have to say to you, one of the scriptures we used last week in the prayer was this very scripture. And then when I was on Facebook yesterday, uh, looking to see what people had posted about uh, Synod, the Connecticut Conference posted a video <laughs> on this very scripture. So there must be spirit moving somewhere that we're all focused on this very scripture. And when I look at it, um, the, it's interesting because what Scott had for the prelude, which was a piece from today's scripture, is the focus point for what I'll be talking about in a bit. But what struck me first of all is that the 70 returned in joy. The 70 returned in joy, or they returned rejoicing. And part of what the scripture is about is the fact that people just need to know that even though the 12 disciples get talked about a lot, there were a lot more folks out there that Jesus sent out, and in this case, ahead of him, to spread the word of his mission and his message, which we know is to be his hands and his heart, his way of being in this world, so that other people can know what we know, how beloved we are, and that we will never, ever be forsaken. And so they go out and they come back rejoicing. At General Synod, there were 844 delegates. There were 72 associate delegates. There were 2,019 visitors, including 453 volunteers. There were 2,934 people counted in attendance. And they came back rejoicing. That 70 has grown. The 12 grew to 70, and the 70 has grown exponentially. If you think about it, some three and a half years ago when we founded a family, we started with 12. And I believe we're well over 70 at this point. Notice, too, that Jesus sends them out in pairs. They're not sent alone. They're <coughs> sent with someone else of the same heart. Because we know how it is in life that sometimes we get disheartened. And it's so great to have a companion who for that moment can lift us up even as we may lift him or her at another moment. And so we're sent out as community. In UCC, we are sent to do the work of justice. And when we arrived, there were 16 of us who were the voting delegates from Florida. There were 14 resolutions on which we were to come to consensus and decision and vote and refine with amendments if they needed amendments. And each of those resolutions was six or seven pages long, and I hope you have time for me to read them all to you <laughs> some other day. <laughs> but I want to tell you that the denomination to which we belong is a denomination that has always been at the forefront of justice issues throughout their history as church. In 2005, General Synod voted overwhelmingly to support marriage equality. That was eight years ago. And they have been working diligently since then for issues, that issue and others. One of the issues we voted on this past week was something called the Doctrine of Discovery. And we voted, I have this little voice wristband, we voted to repudiate the doctrine of discovery, which was the doctrine that our founding folks used 
to take lands from the people that already lived here in this country. Among the people that took the lands were the pilgrims and the congregationalists. Those are the people that started what is now the United Church of Christ. And so this week, we voted to repudiate what we had done wrong. And that's one of the neat things about the United Church of Christ. Not only are we on the forefront of being for justice, we're on the forefront of saying, you know what? We messed up, and we want to fix it. Some years ago, at General Synod, we voted that we had harmed the Hawaiian people by taking over their lands and their country and their culture and repaid them reparation. But this week we voted to say to people, we are wrong and we are sorry. And when we voted the doctrine of discovery into repudiation, our vote was 96.5% in favor of that resolution. We voted on a resolution against bullying and discrimination. It was against bullying and discrimination of LGBT youth. It could have been larger than that, but that was its focus. There was something at UCC General Synod 29 called the SCARF Project. They had hoped for 1,500 woven, knitted, crocheted, any way you want to make it, scarves in rainbow colors to come in. And then if you wanted to be part of the SCARF Project while there, you had to sign a pledge that you would commit yourself to this anti-bullying movement that was being started by the United Church of Christ. This is one of six scarves I have. We had hoped that it would be enough for each person to have one. By the second day, they told us, take two or three. By the time all the scarves had arrived from around the country, the 3,000 scarves that had been called for were 10,000 scarves. And everyone signed a pledge to work against bullying of lesbian, gay, transgender, and bisexual youths in our country. And when they did amendments to that resolution, they added to the list of people that would not participate in bullying clergy to make sure no clergy ever bullied. That resolution passed with 98.7% voting for it. We advocated for funding to construct quality, affordable housing in this country with a 97.7% vote. We recognized the need for compassionate care and healing of our veterans as they returned from war with a 98% vote. We voted to resist re-emerging cultural voices working to undermine the status of women in our society with a 96.6% vote. We had a call to respond to drug-related violence in Honduras resulting for, from the illegal drugs market in the United States with a 96.7% vote. We supported compassionate immigration reform and the protection of the human rights of immigrants with a 99.7% vote. And in a resolution that required a two-thirds vote to pass, after it came unanimously from the committee, it generated a great deal of conversation at the House of the Senate on the floor because it was a vote that would hit us where most of us feel it in our pocketbooks. And with a 72.5% vote, that was more than the two-thirds majority needed, <coughs> We voted to divest from fossil fuel companies as the United Church of Christ and to ask that our, our local congregations consider doing the same. That was tweeted to a number of world leaders. It was tweeted to the White House. It was tweeted to South Africa. 
And later that afternoon, we had a reply from the 1984 Nobel Peace Prize winner, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who acknowledged that we were taking the lead on something that would give us an earth and a world where we could live in cleaner, greener space and our children and grandchildren could as well. There were a number of other decisions that went through by proclamation because no one objected to them. Marriage equality was one of those. On the day that Synod opened, there was a celebration on the patio deck outside the Civic Center in Long Beach. It was filled with delegates, clergy, and lay visitors. All UCC folks were invited to this, as were the local press. And we celebrated, and we gave voice, and we raised signs as UCC. All kinds of signs that said the same thing in different ways because we are a diverse church and raise our voices differently. These are now our signs because someone left them laying around. <laughs> and every time we raised our signs, this is the sign that your pastor held up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What was equally important that day was not just that we celebrated what happened in California, but that we pledged for the other 37 states that did not yet have marriage equality, that we would unite in the work for marriage equality throughout this land because it's all love. And that's what our church pledged. Two days later, we had a flash mob wedding. <laughs> it was attended by the local church of a local pastor and his partner who had waited 15 years to be married. And so their pastor friend and uh, Mel, Mel White, if you know Mel, oh. were there to officiate. <laughs> and their local community affirmed them. And then the entire United Church of Christ assembled was asked if we would affirm them. And we did, and it made the national news. Not only did it make the national news, it filled the hearts of those two individuals that had waited 15 years for the same right to say to his loved one in public, and affirmed in public, I love you, I promise you my fidelity for the rest of my life. And while we cheered, we cried at what was now a reality, hard fought in California. At the same time that we expressed our gratitude and appreciation and celebration of what the US Supreme Court had done on that decision, we expressed our determination and commitment about the voting rights of all persons in this country since some major sections of the Voting Rights Act had been gutted. And that became equally important. On a local level there, the Hyatt Hotels were not ones where we were able to stay. We were actually put on the Queen Mary which does not rock or sway. It is super glued to the dock. <laughs> but it also lacks some of the amenities to which we are accustomed. <laughs> but none of us were in the Hyatt hotels because of a labor dispute, a dispute where people who wanted just pay were told they couldn't have it. On July 2nd, in Long Beach, agreement was reached between the Hyatt Hotel and their workers. A good deal of that came from 
the work of the United Church of Christ around that issue. And so I am one of the 70, or one of the 3,000, or one of the I don't know how many thousands we are, that returns in joy to this family, to my family. Because Jesus does send us out to be the voice of those who have no voice. To be strength for those without power. Jesus sends us out for us to be love for those deemed unlovable and unacceptable. Jesus sends us to care for the widow and the orphan and the widower and to support the poor wherever we find them. At the end of today's reading, when they return, they say to Jesus, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. And today, I think that is still true. And so when we find the demons of racism, or homophobia, or transphobia, of poverty, of war, whatever we find that are our demons today, they will submit to the faithful voices sent by Jesus Christ ahead of him, but with his mission and message. And to these people, Jesus says, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. <coughs> Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. It's not about power. It's about right relation. The right relation that Jesus came and brought and sought and hands off as our mission in this world. One of the commentators I read this weekend said, how do we measure success in our churches today? And he mentioned things like, oh, we measure success by our attendance, or we measure success by our, our collection <coughs> plan, or we measure success by any number of things we could measure success by. But I believe in Faith Family, United Church of Christ, and in the United Church of Christ, we measure success by the lives we touch, by the hearts we heal, by the hope we offer, by the sanctuary we have provided since day one of our existence, and by the extravagant welcome as the hands and heart of Jesus Christ. For no matter where anyone is on life's journey, or who we are, everyone is welcome here. Amen. Amen. Amen.